You can see it on the packaging of all our coolers TDP. This thermal design power describes the thermal power loss created by the CPU which can be dissipated by the cooler or in layman's terms each volt that goes into the CPU's cores creates heat which in turn gets discharged by the cooler. So this TDP numbers gives you a very good idea of the performance of the CPU cooler which is a good thing. But what not everybody may know there are several definitions of TDP. Let's start things off from a historical point of view. About 10 years ago it was safe to say that the input power in watts led to the creation of heat whose thermal power dissipation had to be discharged by an equal number from the CPU cooler. Now in the meantime there has been a lot of development so that now you can't just transfer the chip sided TDP information to the waste heat side anymore. But let's take a simplified look on the CPU side first. Intel and AMD have different approaches to TDP. Two examples show that TDP is not a fixed physical value. If you take AMD's formula to calculate the TDP and change the predetermined value of 42 degrees Celsius for the air temperature within the case, T ambient, you end up with very different TDP results. And if you simply define a highly complex workload as the basis for the TDP, like Intel does, you move around in a very ambiguous environment with different definitions. If you leave the theory behind, the values approximate the real world results. Which means that the TDP values are the attempt to represent the average power consumption in watts which occurs while the CPU runs under full load in its base clock rate. The word average is key here, which means that the TDP on the CPU side does not specify the maximum performance peaks, which by the way are being handled by our coolers without them even breaking a sweat, but rather the power consumption within a timed average. On regular conditions, without a boost and while running at the base clock rate, the CPU power consumption should never exceed the predefined TDP according to the specifications by the chip developers. Here at Be Quiet, the TDP value is also based on predefined parameters that calculate the reception rate of the thermal power dissipation. A quick lesson in cooler development should clear things up a bit. As we are very much focused on low noise, development of a new cooler usually starts with us defining the kind and rotational speed of the fan before using this as a stepping stone for the rest of the process. The prototype of the heatsink can have many different forms, the distance between the single cooling fins is just as important and the kind of paint work, the number and structure of heat pipes, the surface to volume ratio or the connection of the fins. All of these variables are in constant state of flow and the final result gets optimized for low noise development and air turbulences leading to a silent cooler with a high watt TDP. This TDP value is determined in the following way. We use a heat chamber in which we place the cooler in testing on a so-called heat dummy and create a constant ambient temperature. Following this we introduce more and more power to the cooler's base plate until it reaches a predefined temperature threshold. This results in a difference between the base plate and the ambient temperature which the cooler has to uphold for a certain amount of time at the predetermined noise level. The resulting formula is quite simple. The thermal output in watts which the cooler can save discharge under these conditions is our TDP. Admittedly this measuring method is not perfect either, for example a Threadripper cooler is being handled in a different way as it uses heat dummies with different profiles while the results are still being put on a comparison level with those of regular coolers. A test using these set conditions is necessary for us to be able to create a reliable comparison matrix. So whether you are interested in the Pure Rock Slim 2 or the Shadow Rock 3, all of our coolers can be compared using this value. But as there are so many variables in play and there is no universal definition of a TDP rating, the informative value of it varies from developer to developer and from product to product. Let's take the ambient temperature and the air humidity for example. Both have noticeably effects on the performance of a cooler and both are variable in the calculation of the TDP. But is there one universal value that is correct in Stockholm as well as in Miami? Unfortunately not. 
That is not the only reason that recommending the right cooler for a certain processor can be quite difficult. It's not just the room temperature that has a big role in the TDP. It's also things like the kind of case used and its airflow, whether the computer is located next to a wall or stands in direct sunlight, the sort of graphics card and its heat dissipation and much more. All of this means one thing, there is no real standard to TDP values. And if we return to the CPU universe, things get even more complicated. For example, within one CPU generation, identical TDP values are being used even though the clock rates and core numbers differ. What happens if AMD's precision boost is being activated? Or if the Intel CPU receives double the amount of watts over a period of 50 seconds before it clocks down? What does that do to the cooler? Not to mention the variable heat distribution. Which core is working on which which task and where is it located. A fully loaded 24 core CPU will transfer its heat more evenly to the cooler than an underused 6 core processor. And which CPU runs with what clock rate on what kind of motherboard while using how many PCIe lanes. And even if we deviate from the definitions of the chip developers and just take the added watt numbers as a basis, it's quite possible that the heat that is measured at the cores cannot make its way as fast to the heat spreader as the cooler could process it. The underlying reduction is based on a temperature measurement that is not happening at the heat spreader and is therefore not comparable to the cooler universe. There are several viable reasons why the one is very difficult to combine with the other, which is why CPU TDP and cooler TDP should be treated as reference points and less as precise specifications. We consider ourselves power supply experts, so here's a little expert tip. If you overclock, you should never take the thermal TDP value as the basis for the electrical power. Using an oversized heatsink or decreasing the room temperature gives the CPU a much bigger margin for overclocking due to the improved waste heat absorption. That is why you shouldn't align your PSU choice with the raw TDP, but always incorporate an electrical power security buffer of about one and a half or twice the TDP. So here we have two worlds approaching TDP from different directions and we don't have one standard to measure TDP within these worlds. And it's very unlikely that we are going to see one as the matter is highly complex. We even don't have any TDP values for our water coolers due to the low informative value in the relation of cooler to CPU. Applying our measuring method, these numbers would turn out to be very high, which in turn would make our marketing department very happy, but on the other hand would not be comparable to the air coolers which would make them quite useless in the CPU cooler decision making process. Which is why we offer a handy chart in their stat showing you which AIO we recommend for which CPU. Maybe this is the best way of recommending a cooler without confusing the customer with TDP numbers that are no clearly defined physical values. Our guideline to silence enthusiasts is quite easy anyway. Always buy a bit above your actual need because the more potential cooling power you have available, the more silent the cooler will run in regular operation. Well then, stay quiet.